Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's such a pleasure to see you once again. I want to say I'm delighted and I'm happy to be with you. It's always a pleasure. Um, we have a wonderful and exciting series, the Histopathology Practice Questions. And I want to give a big shout out to Dr. Anfonisu, Chief Dennis, Mr. Eduki, and all my wonderful people at the Department of Histopathology for their great help in this series. I want to say thank you guys. You guys are the best. So enjoy. So this is Histopathology Practice Questions Part 2. I remain Dr. E. I. Zebasi, please. I just want to ask you to share this video as far and wide as you can. Subscribe to our channel, like, and comment. Please, this is a free resource, and this is how we keep this channel open. Thank you so much. So, fun time. <laughs> I want you to identify these beautiful looking tissue types. All right, we have A, B, and C. I'm sorry this time around there will be no gifts. The gifts are in 30 things you must know about H and E. This is just a fun thing. Please don't expect any gifts. And please keep watching till the end of the video and you will see whether you have gotten the answers correct or not. All right. So uh, which of the following question or which the following statement rather is not true about acid formaldehyde hematine. It is formed as a result of bloody tissue of freshly prepared 10% NBF and is also known as valeria pigment. It appears as a brown W refractile granular deposit dispersed throughout the tissue. It is as a result of long stored formalin solution which deteriorates and produces formic acid that we have put hemoglobin can be removed by treating tissue sections during staining using saturated picric acid in absolute ethanol for one hour. So the correct answer is A. If you look at this slide, you will notice the brown pigment in the slide. Those are the um, acid formaldehyde hematine granules. So A is your answer. Next question, which of the following is not a simple fixative car noise fluid is not a simple fixative. It's actually a compound fixative. Uh, next question, to inhibit polymerization of formaldehyde to paraformaldehyde, commercial strong formalin usually contains A, acetone, B, propanol, E, ethanol, D, methanol. Usually you add methanol to prevent Formation of para, paraformaldehyde in formalin. Our question number four, formaldehyde fixes protein by oxidative reaction, correct? Stabilizing protein mass, correct? Forming methylene bridges, correct? So all of the above is correct. How many grams of NaCl is in nine mils of 10% formaldehyde? Uh, before you start choosing an answer, you should know that 10% um, formaldehyde is made up of 10% formalin and 0.5% uh, sodium uh, chloride, which means that there are 0.85 grams of sodium chloride in 100 mils of this solution. So to uh, find the amount in NaCl, you just say 0.85 over 100 uh, times 9. That should give you 0 0.0765. So that's your answer. Next question, the amount of sodium dihydrogen phosphate monohydrate and disodium hydrogen phosphate in 4 liters of 10% uh, neutral buffer formalin is? The answer will be 16 and 26 grams because usually you have um, 4 grams of the first salt and 6.5 uh, grams of the second salt that particular preparation so for four liters all you need to do is to multiply by four uh specimens collected from living from the living that's from living human beings for histopathology is termed a biopsy all right if it's from a dead person it's an autopsy if it's from a living person it's certainly a biopsy and you use it for histopathological examination you can have a prostate biopsy you can have uh, a breast biopsy. Question number eight. Which of the following statements is not true about picric acid as a fixing agent? 
Well, it causes uh, swelling of tissue. It forms picrate with acidic amino acid. It is a constituent of canals. Read all these are not true. So I will take all of the above because picric acid actually precipitates proteins by forming salts with basic proteins. And it also causes uh, tissue uh, shrinkage. That's why wherever it is used as for a fixation, it also adds some glacial acetic acid, which brings about swelling. So it partially kind of counteracts the shrinkage from the picric acid. And it's certainly not a constituent of canoise fluid. Uh, question number nine. The, pri the primary target during fixation of tissue is usually protein because they form the primary target because they form the structural framework for cells. So that's what fixate is uh, target. Chloroforming carnoids fluid A makes nucleus is eosinophilic and the cytoplasm basophilic. B it makes the cytoplasm eosinophilic. D it makes the nucleus basophilic. None of the above. Ah, uh, the answer is none of the above because chloroforms work in uh, that particular solution is to uh, fix glycogen, nucleic acids, and lipids in tissue section. And the presence of chloroform in the solution helps to extract lipids, which allows a clear visualization of the cell structures. Um, what are those? Those are microtomes. So each of the following is not a type of microtome you have. A rotary microtome, laser microtome, saw microtome, plasma microtome. I've never heard of a plasma microtome. Ah, uh, so it's not really a type of microtome. We have a rotary laser uh, vibrating. We even have a sliding microtome, a cryo microtome, a saw microtome. All these are types of microtome. We have ultra microtome. You know, so many types of microtome. All right, question number 12, the optimal formalin fixation time for two to three millimeters thin sliced tissues at room temperature is 24 hours. They must be preserved for at least 24 hours. Question number 13, 20% alcohol used during microtomy aids in dehydrating the tissue, fixation of tissue, stretching folds as an adhesive. Actually, it's used to stretch folds to make microtomy easier. All right, uh, question number 14. Section adhesives that should be used carefully due to infection risk include gelatin, mass, egg, albumin, plasma, and serum, celloidin. If you have to use plasma and serum, you have to be very careful because of blood-borne infections like HIV, hepatitis, and all that. So question number 15. Wow, that's a nice burning wax. All right, the temperature of the flotation bath should be approximately 5 degrees centigrade below the melting point. Actually, it should be 10 degrees centigrade the wax melting point. This is because the paraffin wax is soft, and if you go higher than that, it will actually disintegrate, and you will not be able to get the slight tissue section that you want. So question number 16, the edge of disposable blades should uh, used in microtomy can be coated with chromium. Uh, and another thing you can use is uh, Teflon. And when you coat it, it helps to increase the sharpness and durability of the blade. Question number 17, what type of dye dissolves in fat? The kind of dye that dissolves in fat is called a lysochrome. All right. They are usually used to stain fat tissues. All right. The group of atoms that modify the ability of a chromophore to absorb light are called oxochromes. They modify light absorption and properties of the chromophores and enhance the dye staining capacity. Question number 19 Which of the following chemicals is a non coagulant additive fixative that would be formaldehyde because formaldehyde is non-coagulant and it's an additive fixative which means that it preserves the tissue structure without denaturing proteins the coagulant ones do preserve tissue by denaturing proteins and um, 
the non-coagulant fixing agents chemically react with proteins and other cell and tissue components, becoming bound to them by addition and forming intermolecular and intra cross crosslinks. Question 20. A coordination complex formed between a polyvalent metal ion and certain dyes is referred to as a lake. Lake, 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 lake. That's the correct answer. Because a lake is a coordination complex formed between a metal ion and a dye, which is in tissue staining, for example, your alum and your hematane. Question 21. Which of the following statements about formaldehyde is not correct? It allows for long-term tissue storage. It preserves tissue morphology well. It is expensive. Permits the use of other physicists. Actually, the answer, but this is a negative question. The answer is it's expensive. It's not expensive. It's inexpensive, it's easily available, it's fairly con uh, convenient to use, it's relatively safe. That is why you widely use it as a common um, tissue fixative. All right, so question number 21. Nuclear fixatives include Boeing's fluid, Zenka's fluid, Fleming's fluid, all of the above. I will go for all of the above. Um, if you need some more of uh, nuclear fixatives, you can add uh, genders uh, and carinoid fluids, you know, to that list as example of nuclear fixatives that are used to preserve the nucleus of cells. Question number 22, sledge. Wow, that's a big one. Sledge, <laughs> sledge microtones are designed for cutting. A, large blocks of paraffin embedded materials. B, whole organs and resin embedded tissue. It can also be used to cut materials like wood, plastics, textile fibers. So I'll go with all of the above. Um, sledge microtones are usually used for heavy duty cutting, like the large blocks of paraffin wax. Okay. And if you go, if you go to bot botanical microtomy technique, it's usually used to cut um, hard materials like wood, like bone and leather. Uh, all this kind of require a sledge microtome. And like I said, they have heavier blades and they do not cut as finely or as thinly as the regular microtomes. So sec uh, question 23, which of the following is a coagulant non-additive uh, fixative that would be acetone. Acetone is a coagulant non-additive fixative, which means that it precipitates proteins without adding to their structure. So other examples you can add to acetone include ethanol and methanol. Next question, following hematoxylin and eosin staining, uh, slides are dehydrated through ascending strengths of alcohol and cleared in xylene. However, the first xylene in the series is milky white. What is the most appropriate action? If you look at these classes, you will see these are uh, containers for deepening xylene, and you can see this one is milky. So what is responsible for it? Usually you see this kind of milky water if um, the water has not been completely removed from the section, or if there's a kind of like carryover there, that has made the alcohol become dilute, you understand? So this can cause this kind of milky thing. So what you will need to do is to change the alcohols and the xylenes at the end of the series because it's actually a water that is causing that. So you have to change the alcohols if it has become too dilute and also the xylene so that you can get a clear slide at the end. Question number 25, formaldehyde undergoes condensation at 40% to give strong formalin. And that strong formalin is used in tissue fixation. So having come to the end of this presentation, we want to get our answer to the fun time. So you can see the tissues here looking like uh, honeycomb things. This is adipose tissue. These are fat cells that have been emptied out and stained. This is areola tissue, and this is reticular tissue. All right? To help to identify these tissues, you need to look at the connective tissue and the direction the connective tissue is taking. 
All right. So I want to say thank you so much for listening. I love you so much. You're my MVP. Please subscribe if you've not. Please comment if you have not. Please share me these resources with other friends who may need it also. Thank you so much and God bless. Bye.